Hopefully soon that changes. All right, guys. Well, we have, we have a very special guest. We've had him waiting for a little bit. He just got off a match. It's the Ferris wheel. Tyler Abizi. What's good, Ferris? Oh, I don't think you can hear us, Riley. Ferris! Yo, what's good? What's up, you fucker, dude? Yeah, what's dude, good? Yo, what's why up? the guys f doing? are you smiling, dude? Yeah, why are you smiling on here, man? What are you doing? Oh, my bad. Let, me, let me get a straight face. My yeah. Bad. All right, well, what's congratulations. Good, yeah, What's first off, what's going on? Talk to us. Big win today. Uh, how, how are you feeling overall? Just give us the, the overall vibe of where you're at. I mean, I'm feeling... I mean... I could be better. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. So before that series, I don't know what it was, but I got I started getting the craziest migraine. I hate being that guy, but like, it was like one of those ones where you literally feel like you can't think straight. And I was like tweaking. I'm like, bro. I was like, even if I take medicine, it's not gonna go away in time. So I'm like, I'm just got to fight through it. I was really fighting through it, and like, thankfully we like iced up and won. But I mean, it just happens. You know what I mean? So you're telling me that you just beat us like that with a migraine? Dude, I was fighting for my life, bro. You I was just... like, I was like, I think after the match, I like stood up and I was like, guys, like, you guys are uh, gross. So we thought I had it the couldn't worst get worse. It, yeah, we thought it couldn't get worse, and it just got worse. <laughs> well, oh, well, are you feeling better at least? Uh, I took some medicine after the match, and I, it started like started fading away a little bit. So it's not that bad right now. But yeah, it was it was a tough one to fight through for sure. Yeah, usually okay. like when I was sick playing, the adrenaline would like always at least bring me back to like a certain point where I didn't yeah. feel like complete. But I'm glad you're feeling better. I mean, that, that f sucks. Um, uh, so I'm, yeah. I'm going to ask you bluntly. From our perspective watching, it felt like we had you guys there on, like, maps two and three. Like, we had some 4v2s, the control. Uh, there was one time where you guys killed Ant off the point off the last second and lost, like, a 9v4. How does it feel as a player? Like, does it feel like we kind of choked a bit? Does it feel like you guys clutched up, mix of both? Like, from your perspective, is it like, they just trolled or is like just talk me through it oh i mean i mean after we after we won the round we we're like oh my god they just choked like we were literally <laughs> like we were like hyped because we knew that like winning that round would still give us a chance to win the map you know what i mean like we we're like if we go down if you go down if you lose an offense on that map it's gonna be really hard to like bring it back because you probably have to win an offense and even if you win that offense you might get like another offense like round five so winning that round like kind of helped us you know maintain that composure to like know that we could still bring it back and win yeah it just i laugh it's it's so hard to, it's so hard <laughs> to hear you say that like they just f choked i mean it, realistically it was it was back and forth all series there were so many clutches by yeah. you guys i gotta ask like just as a team how do you guys continue to do this uh not only against us and our team but literally against every team you guys always seem to have very calm and cool heads in the clutch moments uh, would you attribute that to anything? Like, how, how, are, how are the comms in those tight situations? I mean, sometimes our comms do get hectic, but I feel like we're so good because I think a lot of people hear our comms from an outside perspective, and they like, they're like, wow, their comms are insane. Like, they're super fast, but I feel like we're all really good at, like, still hearing, you know, everyone, even when they do get that hectic. But, I mean, um, I mean, it's definitely nice to, you know, have that ice, I feel like, as a team because I feel like we've always kind of had that ice uh in clutch moments and matches um but yeah i mean i, I it's pretty it's pretty dope that we have that yeah i mean it i've sounded, felt the ice i've it's it's they're icy they're I mean, pretty yeah, icy. dude you guys are all right yeah uh it sounds so we got to listen on six star for a bit it sounded like selium my boy mc was not a full-blown igl but he was like really like sort of really out there getting vocal he's like yo pick up pinch yeah. get this like how has his comms because I, I can't lie, I think years ago he was, you couldn't even understand the guy. Like, I, I genuinely think, like, in old listenings, you couldn't understand him. Now you can make some words out. Like, how does, how does, I guess, the overall, do you guys have an IGL and would you give that to somebody or you think it's just a team effort is my question. I feel like with us, it's usually a team effort. I mean, bringing Zach on our team, I feel like he brings that, like, confidence and just, like, composure because he just is, like, always locked in. You know what I mean? And I feel like MC, like, his comms have definitely gotten better over the years. Um, I feel like he's worked on it, obviously, like, individually. And because, uh, I mean, he definitely comps super fast. Like, sometimes we're like, oh, my God. Because, like, he's, he's in those hype speed. moments, he's just, you know, spamming comms, like, spamming. But, I mean, it's, it's definitely, I feel like it's a team effort for us for sure. Yeah, talking about Zach a little bit, or Draws, for everyone that doesn't know him uh, by that name. 
Uh, what would you say that he provides your team that, that some of your other forwards didn't? And this isn't to tear down your other forwards because you've played with some great players. It's more so to touch on the strengths of draws and, and what he brings to your team uh, just overall. Uh, I feel like for us, like after last year, we've realized like MC should be our main AR, just the way he plays the game. Uh, he plays a, he plays like super methodical. He just, you know, is always, he's a pretty slow player. So after, I feel like Cold War, he started slowing down a bit and we were like, okay, after MW2, we we're like, we need to get a faster paced AR. Like we need to get a flex. So we knew Zach was like, you know, the one, like we knew that he, like I said, he's going to bring the composure. He's going to bring the pace. He's down to run it down anytime. You know what I mean? He's always down to like in an S and D, like, let's run it down. Like he doesn't <laughs> care. And he'll follow up me and Chris whenever we need him to, and just get that trade. You know, I feel like that helped our team a lot because I feel like our pacing over the past couple years before this season was super inconsistent and it showed in hard point, especially. Yeah. Well, people were calling, people were saying MC was playing for strictly kills and I was mind blown that that was a thing going on because yeah. it was, it was clearly like a pacing thing and it makes sense that draws has helped you guys a lot with that. From, oh, yeah, from what we know about your team, I was watching UFC last night and uh, so I'm going to tie it in a bit here. Perea won the belt or defended his belt and he was like, I don't let this belt get to my head. Like, I still prepare and practice the same way I would, knowing I have to go out there and win it every time. And from what we know about your team, I feel like you guys take practice very seriously and, like, you guys are held very accountable. Because, like, granted, I think a lot of pros don't play like they used to, but I feel like from what we know about you guys, you guys get incredible practice and, like, your system is... Indiv like, you're all individually accountable. There's no one showing up late. You're all there watching VOD, like... What is the practice and preparation like for you guys, despite being the best? Because a lot of people, they, they start feeling like the best, and that's when they fall off. Yeah, I mean, for us, I feel like we know that we always have to put in that 110% effort, you know, in practice, anything. Because if not, like you said, like, you're going to falter. Like, there's going to be times where you're going to falter for sure. So, um, I feel like going after, like, Major 1, we were like, yo, we got to, you know, put in even that extra 10% of, like, doing just, like, you know, the nerdy stuff, like, about, you know, any map, whatever the case is, you gotta, you gotta, like, go super hard at all times, especially because I feel like even if you falter a little bit, you can lose to some of the bottom, like, eight teams. It's, it's, it's like a super competitive league, so I feel like for us, we're always putting in that extra effort, and in practice, we're taking it, like, super seriously to make sure we're always getting better at even just the little things. Yeah, and I, I want to ask another question following up on that because obviously in the community, a lot of people play eights, S and D eights, all that stuff, and you guys really aren't in them. Draws is in them. Uh, is there a reason why you guys don't play eights, or is it because you think you're getting good enough practice with your actual team that you don't really need to play them and form bad tendencies or, or whatever it is? Yeah, well, I feel like Zach is really good about playing eights and, you know, learning some of that nerdy stuff that you can learn in eights. Um for me personally, and I'm pretty sure even like Chris and MC, they're just, uh, I think we're all kind of the same. We feel like eights kind of play a little bit differently compared to matches. Uh, a lot of people play a lot like faster. They'll just do like random stuff in eights to try to like test timings and stuff like that. And I feel like I, I don't know, I'm, I'm more of like a, I'd rather like focus just purely on like S and D scrims and then matches because they can, they play, like I said, completely different yeah, and right. I don't want to get any like bad tendencies. So that's why I don't really play them that much. Great answer. I got two things. MC's shooting bodies now. Do you guys love it? Kayshawn, what's up? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, MC shooting bodies, like, bro, he's he's just hilarious. Like, the guy is so funny. He's always just throwing jokes around, you know, even at, like, the event. Like, I saw, like, the Pred clip where MC went to the bathroom and said, nice cock. Like, dude, <laughs> he's, 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 he's a comedian, bro. He's so funny, man. Dude, like, what's up with you phase guys, man? Because even Alec, I remember Alec back in the day, he'd, like, blow a kiss across the stage, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, did he just blow a kiss That's at why me? They got rid of it's Austin. coming from FaZe. I don't know what's going on in That's that camp. That's why they got rid of Austin. They were like, we need a troll in this. We need some more trolliness. Austin was Bro, the hat Austin's on, not trolling. mean mugging him and shit. No. Um, yeah. Who do you think made the best roster change? Oh, so, shit. Because we finally saw some changes. We got Real for Heretics. We got Gunless and Stan to Rocker. Um, Joe Deceives back to, back to Thieves. Who do you think... Out of all these teams, top four is pretty dominant, but who do you think made the best roster change? I probably... It's tough because, like I said, the top four is just above and beyond, like, the rest of the teams at the moment. It's just so hard for them to, like, lose. But I feel like if I had to go with one, it'd have to be LAT. Um, 
my boy Joe is on that team, and I, I feel it. like he's he's super he's super talented, and I feel like he hasn't you know tapped into that potential. I feel like today he was like frying out there. So I feel like if I had to go with one, it'd be them. Yeah. All right. Well, I have one more question for you, and then we'll let you go. We know that you waited, so thank you for hopping on. First off, oh, no um, problem. No problem. But. Pleasure. So this year, obviously, the top four is insane. Like I think the the series record is fifty three and four, fifty three and five. Would you say that it's the distribution of ta- of talent across the teams, or would you say it's more so the game and the skill gap of the game? I'm just curious what your opinion is. You know, obviously, winning an event. I think is a product of both because I feel like the game is obviously there's a pretty big skill gap with 150 HP. I feel like usually the higher the TTK the more of a skill gap there will be. And then obviously, like you said, the the talent distribution is kind of, you know, more leaning towards all the top four teams. I feel like after last year, everyone had that, you know, yo, let's build our, like, God roster. Let's build our, like, dream team. Like, And I feel like the top four teams just ran away with all the talent. So I feel like it's hard for those bottom teams to kind of compete sometimes. All right, I got one more question off of that question. So if we had the same teams last year at MW2, do you think there would be more upsets? Uh, I definitely think there would be a little bit more upsets, especially because of how 100%. that game played. Uh, because you know the TTK was just insanely fast. Like you could just get away with some like crazy pieces, get behind people, Dude. you know, Deddy stuff like that. So I mean, for sure. I still remember that kill, bottom orange. Uh, that simp got on Pred. Yeah, he oh, on shot, Pred? Yeah. shot gunned him. It's still like that's like the the right. the stick out one of the stick out moments of the entire year. Oh, yeah, that was insane. I didn't even know how I got that kill. When he got that kill, I was like, oh, my God. He was like was 3 like, HP, and he just... <laughs> yeah, I was like, bro. A piece. That was nuts. Yeah. You got anything else, or should we let Abe go? I don't, man. Just congratulations on the major two win, hey. and, and I mean, you guys you guys look undeniable right now. So, yeah. uh, I mean, you've been dominating since coming on through, so I'm done glazing you. Thank you, but fuck you. Hey, yeah. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you hey, coming hey, on. Hey, thanks for stopping hey. by, kid. Have a good rest hey, of your night. no problem. Yeah, you guys have a good night. Peace. He's so likable. See that's the, the like see that's so the like thing. I wish I could hate him. It's like you, it's like you see you see the results and you see like the chats and sh- and then you like talk to Abe and you're like, I love this guy. They, they, yeah. Abe's a really good guy, um, but we don't like him when we're playing him. I'll tell you that we don't like enemies, him when we're playing him for just a bit and then all's back to normal. But shout out to Abe for hopping on. Uh, we we mixed up the order a little bit. We just didn't want to keep him waiting too long. Obviously, after a match, we're just thankful that he even made time and came on to to do a quick little interview with us so shouts out to abe uh but next up we're going to move into our team of the week let's talk about some of the players that really stood out and pressed us throughout the first week of the split uh zen is there anybody that you want to throw out there because i got two that i know for sure hmm well you want to pick an ar or a sub uh you can pick whatever you want if snoopy won i would have put snoopy on it I'm gonna go at Real. He did not. I'm, I'm gonna go at Real. I think Real's debut was. Uh, I think Real is undeniable for Team of the Week. I, I think mean, comes in. I think I couldn't find the words, but I feel like his debut was inevitable. Carolina, not figuring out his visa, could come back to bite them in the ass because the way he played um, against Boston was impressive, and obviously it was only one series from him, but he drops like. A 1.25, he's going crazy in that series. The plays he was making, the pieces he was getting, I think Real belongs in the team of the week.